Welcome, this is Simply the Truth with me, Doug Harris, and we're so glad you've joined us because you are as important as those of us are here in the studio. And in the studio with me today is my old mate, JT. And it's really good to be here again, Doug. Hi, John. You notice I didn't, I resisted the temptation to introduce you as Mr. Marmite. Uh, you did, and I was very impressed, but you failed just I now. failed because I had to mention <laughs> it. <laughs> and for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, you should have been watching before. Uh, but uh, great to have you with us, yeah, it's uh, great JT. To be here. Um, I, what, the subject we're going to look at today, we've, we've looked at before, um, and, but it is such a vital mm. and important and central aspect of our Christian lives. It, I, I think it's really worth our while looking at it again and getting right to, to the heart of the matter. The whole area of the gospel. Yeah, that's right. We, we actually did six programmes. On the, might even have been seven. Yeah. And uh, certainly from my perspective, uh, it isn't like when you hear, oh, we're going to do the gospel, you can almost hear, think, oh, well, I know that. Well, it's my absolute conviction that most Christians don't really understand uh, the content of the gospel. And I'm not saying that in some uh, put-down way. I'm saying that the gospel is much, much bigger than most Christians think that it is. Mm. And uh, I, I think today's program is important. It is, because, as you say, uh, so often we, 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 we hear, well, because the gospel is, is for the unsaved, and we just preach the gospel to them. You're, you're shaking your head, JT. But that, that is the concept, isn't mm. it, that, that many people have. We're missing out on something, if oh, that's yeah, what we, we believe, we isn't it? We are so missing out on something. The, 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 the gospel is the essence of... God's purpose, God's plan. It's an announcement of what God is up to, what he has done and what he's going to do. Uh, if we understand and communicate the gospel correctly, we head off at the past some of the questions that people will raise later. We deal with doubts that Christians can have later. And if we get the response to the gospel right, we will have people who start the Christian life healthy and strong rather than spending about 10 or even more years, I, it took me 10 years, to get the foundations right. Mm. And we're going to be looking at all those things and develop them as we go through the programme. Um, I, I guess from what you've said there, uh, one of the first things we obviously clearly need to say is that the gospel is more than just me asking the Lord into my heart and coming through to an initial salvation. Mm. That is not the be or it may be part of the gospel, the beginning of the gospel, but it's not the whole total, is it? Well, I don't want to be controversial here, Doug. Uh, come on, I, JT. I, why do I invite you on my programs? Okay, okay. <laughs> but, I, but I am just about to have a marmite moment with you again. <laughs> and that isn't even the gospel at all. Right. Uh, at, at bare minimum, that could be a response to the gospel but it's not the right one, mm -hmm. it's, not the, it's not the appropriate one, and it isn't the one that will bring us into the biggest story uh, to hit the cosmos. And th th the fact is, our, it's my conviction that the way we Bible-believing Christians communicate the gospel in most instances and in most places, it's me-centered. You know, the, if, if we asked 100 Christians define it, they probably would say, uh, I trust in Jesus and I'll go to heaven when I die. Well, that's not the gospel either. Honestly, it's not. And um, like you talked about letting Jesus into your heart and this sort of thing, those, those things are not in the Bible. And I, I'm, I'm really Come on. hoping. Revelation chapter 3. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Uh, uh, not, not, not a gospel message? No, it's not a gospel message. Like Revelation chapter 3 uh, is written to a church for a start, so clearly something is a bit different there. And churches, the first Christian churches did as we should do, they ate together regularly. And clearly from the church that Jesus was knocking, it wasn't the heart, it was in, in the fellowship of the church. And he was saying, let me in. You know, and then we'll eat together, but don't just carry on without me because you ain't kosher, you ain't real, sort of right. thing. So. Okay, um, so let, 
let's first of all, and as I say, several of the things you've mentioned there, I want to unpack a little yeah. bit more as we go through. But let, let's start first of all. If I was to ask you um, in a few sentences or maybe paragraphs, because you tend to talk in paragraphs more than in sentences. Do I really? <laughs> yeah, it's great stuff. Um, what is the gospel? Let, let, let's start there. Well, what I will say before I answer the question is that the New Testament uses different language. Different writers use different language to describe the gospel. So, uh, for instance, the, the gospel can be described as the gospel of the kingdom. And uh, that's one way of, of talking about John talks about it as eternal life. And I, can know, I know what's happening out there. There's this personalization going on, mm -hmm. that it's all to do with me and me living forever or whatever, but it's the life of the age to come. Uh, so different writers will use different language. But if, if you did ask me that question, which you just have, my, my <laughs> answer- You might get round to answering yeah, it yeah, before the yeah, end of the show, yeah. yeah. My answer would be the God who made heaven and earth has decisively acted to put the world to right. He has personally stepped into this messed up world. Uh, Jesus is God with us. Through his life, his death, his resurrection, the Jesus event, he defeated our greatest enemy and has shown that God will eventually put everything right. And he has started to do this from the resurrection of Jesus on. If you asked me to dilute it even further, I could do it in two phrases. And people may well want to pursue this further. It would be Jesus has risen from the dead and that, and that he is now Lord of all. That's the gospel. So in other words, what you're saying, <coughs> and you've already dealt with this on two or three occasions, and we've only been going a few minutes, the gospel is not me, it's not selfish. Um, I often maintain that most of us are actually saved for selfish reasons. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to hell or I want good life or, or yeah. whatever. Uh, and that is why you said earlier on that initial act of reception is, is not the gospel because mm -hmm. that can often be about me. Yeah. What you are talking about is a lordship. What you're talking about is the gospel mm -hmm. of the kingdom. And I, I uh, always think when I use that word kingdom, the, so a better translation of the Greek word is kingship. In other words, it is to do with the person, not, not the place. I think sometimes we can, it's the gospel the of the kingdom is a place, it's but it's, it's the rule, it's the mm. kingship. It, it's the one that's doing the ruling. Mm. And so you are saying the gospel is more about lordship and him than it is about selfishness and me. It, 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 the gospel is about Jesus. If you really wanted to bring it down to one word, you could say the gospel is Jesus. And I'm not being trite, I'm not being minimalistic, and I'm not trying to dumb it down. It is actually more profound, um, more true to the New Testament, that the good news, the announcement, the proclamation is about Jesus. That's why the gospels are called the gospels. I used to wonder when I was a youngster why they called the gospels the gospels, because the gospel w was like wasn't out yet properly, uh, but it was about Jesus. And yes. that's why the four gospels, because they are about Jesus, that's what the gospel is. Mm -hmm. That's who the gospel is. And even the kingdom of God, you know, Jesus said, um, uh, the kingdom of God, he didn't say within you, he said the kingdom of God is among you mm -hmm. because Jesus was there, he was standing. He was the embodiment of the rule of God. He was the good news. and. Uh, it, I, I find it's frightening, actually, that uh, to think that there are people who have an, a tiny gospel. Doug, it, it's it's so small. It's you know, a friend of mine. You know the story. I've told it before. Used to go into shops, walk up to the counter, and say, "Do you want to live forever?" <laughs> and the guy used to say, "Yeah." Um, do, you, do you want to go to heaven when you die? Yeah. Do you want to have a fantastic life? Who'd say no? Yeah? Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come into my life, amen. You're now a Christian. It's not. No. That is, that, that was, that's not the gospel. Where's Jesus in that? Mm -hmm. um, it's not the gospel. And even if we emphasize the death of Jesus, mm -hmm. that's not the gospel. Right. Because 
uh, if Christ has not been raised from the dead, our faith is futile. And we need to be resurrection emphasis Christians rather than just death of Jesus Christian. Do you think that many Christians and maybe parts of the church are suffering? You, you, you've talked about a small gospel, a little mm. gospel. Uh, wasn't it J.B. Phillips who wrote a book, your, your, oh no, it was Your God is Too Small, I think. Anyway, yeah. but, but it, that, that same concept that we've, we've minimalized it. Uh, very, very much. Do you, do you well, think... We've marketed it. That's what's happened. We've, sorry? We've marketed, marketed it. it yeah. it's, it's become a, a four-point repeat now, after me. Are, are we losing out? Because having had the gospel preached to us, having responded to that gospel, that's it. I, there is no more. Do, mm. do you think we are losing out? Do you think we're, we haven't got that same vista and outlook of increasing because we feel we've got it. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. The, look, the, the, um, typically the gospel is, is something like the way it's communicated. Look, Jesus died for you. You've sinned. Jesus died for you. Um, receive him into your heart and you'll go to heaven when you die. Th that is so thin. Uh, it's, not, it's not embracing any of the richness. The response called for is not the biblical response, which is to repent and be baptized, and we'll surely talk about that later. It's receive him into your heart. What on earth, in heaven or on earth, does that mean? Mm -hmm. Receive him into your heart. You know, the, yes, I do believe that we are missing out. We're missing out because there are people who are born feebly, and they may well get to a place of strength and health, but it takes too long. Mm -hmm. For me, I believe it took me 10 years to be born properly as a Christian, fully as a Christian. Um, uh, and in, in, in terms of understanding the gospel, if, if we understood how big it was, we wouldn't have half the problems we do firstly handling other people's objections and questions, particularly about suffering, and we wouldn't have half the doubts that we do later on. Mm. Um, you know. Uh, a little example, if, if we, all right, let me cut to the chase on this one. When it comes to understanding the size of the gospel, right, we've already talked about being the kingdom of God. We've already, already talked about Jesus being Lord of all, not just personal Lord, that is an integral part, but he is Lord of all, of everything. He is more powerful than any other force in the universe and has become so through the resurrection of the dead. Um, but if we understood the size, God's intention, God's plan, and we, we pray for it without understanding it, is your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That the rule of God, this is the good news, the rule of God will one day extend throughout the earth and throughout creation. The Bible uses restoring all things, the regeneration of everything, a uh, new heaven and a new earth. Talks about Jesus being the firstborn from the dead. It's when Jesus came back from the dead, he made it possible for all the rest to happen. And um, if, if we were born with that size, yeah. we, we would then wouldn't be knocked off course by someone saying to us, if there's a God, why is there so much suffering? Because we could say, ah, you haven't heard. <laughs> you haven't heard. He started to fix that. He's shown us that he can. He raised Jesus from the dead. And it's not finished yet, but it started. Mm. Mm. You, I, I mean, just talking there, it, it, it just struck me so much that it, it, it's about Jesus. And maybe we stop sort of learning about or, or, or wanting to know more about what Jesus has done, yeah. what Jesus, you know, well, I've accepted him, therefore it's all right. But you, you just mentioned just a few mm. of his titles. You just mentioned just a few of the things that, mm. that, that were happening. The richness of that. Yeah. Now, that, we've made, we make a start, but just by, and again, I, I want you to, and, and just by sort of putting our hand up in a meeting, or mm. as you say, saying, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, amen. Yeah. Um, those things may be all right outwardly if there's an inward response, but just by themselves, they don't even begin to get us to start on this road. Yeah. 
uh, do, do they? No, 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 they don't. Um, let, let me. No, we're, we're talking about the response to the gospel now. So the response to Jesus dying, Jesus coming back from the dead, Jesus now being ruler of all, Lord of all creation. The response to that should be uh, uh, repentance, which means to change the way that we think, which obviously would lead to a change of action. And we, you know, we can get that from um, Acts chapter 2 as an example and, and other places through the scriptures. There must be trust and belief and faith in what Jesus has done. Not, not for me, but what he's done. What he's done. Let's forget about me for the moment. Yeah, yeah. What he has done. Right. And he's begun the great reversal, the great regeneration. Um, and then if we are to enter this massive story, this huge, enormous, glorious news, let's get rid of the past. Let's bury it good and proper and let's get baptised. The, the New Testament doesn't know of any Christian uh, and I'm sure people will phone up and say, the thief on the cross, let them do that. Um, the New Testament doesn't know of any Christian that, uh, that hasn't been baptised. And that is the biblical response. Believe and be baptised, repent and be baptised. And it's interesting, Doug, I was uh, dealing with a group of uh, late teens, early 20s the other day, and we were looking at Christian foundations, all right? And it's, it's all there in Hebrews 6. The first two are repentance and faith. So there's this clear repentance. So if someone isn't willing to stop sleeping with their girlfriend or taking drugs or whatever, um, and they're not prepared to do that, well, okay, they're not going to become a Christian now then. They're not going to start this journey with Jesus now then. That's fine. Um, but there's repentance and faith. Then there's baptisms and uh, laying on of hands, mm -hmm. which is, speaks to us of water baptism, Holy Spirit baptism, which is an integral part of being born properly as a Christian. And then finally, eternal judgment and the resurrection of the dead, which is the size of the gospel. So uh, whether you're reading Hebrews 6 or any other part of the New Testament, and, it's big. And, and those, interestingly, those things you've just mentioned from Hebrews mm. 6, he, he actually, the writer of the Hebrews actually says that these are just the foundational yeah. things and we want to move on from that's there. Right, that's and, right. and, and yet I think sometimes when you read those six things, we don't even know them as Christians, we as don't. foundation, let, let alone moving on we don't, um, we don't. Uh, and, from them. And they're so huge, they're so massive, they're so exciting really. Let, um, let me ask you a question because I really want to try and help some people out there mm -hmm. and, and uh, I, I, I know there are some people out there that feel this because I often get this question. Yeah. You, you talked about somebody being born, but being born weekly. I mean, yeah. uh, that doesn't mean once a week. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, you, you know, it, it's sort of the incubator. It, yeah. it, it, it's sort of the very sickly child that's mm. always... Mm. Uh, now, um, with somebody like that, we're not saying they're not born again. We're not saying they haven't come to Christ. But what we're saying is that they've never really seen what the gospel really is. I mean, mm. Now, this, this experience, this initial experience, may have been 10 years ago, 20 years ago, but they're sickly, they're weak, they, they don't know mm. deliverance from the past, they don't know these things that we've been talking about. They can't get born again again, but what should they do? Mm. I mean, how do you get off that life support system? Mm. How, how do you get out of the incubator? Well, I, th I think there are probably two things, broad areas of things that need to be done. Understand the gospel. And, and, understand and is that by just reading the scriptures, reading it and read, understanding it? Read the scriptures. Um, uh, focus on Jesus. Focus on the resurrection. That's a big thing. You know, the, the number of... I, I was actually told off on an internet message board because I said, you cannot understand the gospel uh, if you omit the resurrection of Jesus. Omit, not admit, omit, omit. 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 Yes. Uh, and they obviously believe that the gospel could just be Jesus died for us. It's not. It's, it's not. so, you, you can't read the book of Acts without understanding right. it's the That's resurrection. Right. Read Acts chapter 10, read Romans chapter 1. Um, just see how, how great and enormous the gospel is. And when it comes to the response to the gospel, why not read Luke 14? Because Luke 14, there's a number of parables there which Jesus told, which shows that even though the gospel is free to all mankind to respond to, uh, it's, it isn't something which you can do and, 
and not allow God to change you. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're going to if you're going to live for Jesus, are you prepared to build the tower? Have you yes. got enough? Have you counted the cost? Have you counted the cost? Right. Yeah, you know all those things. And in the parable of in Matthew 13, in the parable of um, treasure in the field and the pearl of great price, yes. the treasure in the field person was just wandering through life. Yeah. And just, oh, I bumped into some treasure. <laughs> so it might be someone who met some Christians or came across a church. And uh, the other person had been searching, searching. Yeah. You can imagine someone trying the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses and spiritual uh, New Agey type yeah. stuff, trying all these different things. And then all of a sudden, oh, I think this is it. I think this is it. Yeah. But for both of those people, it is the same response. Yes. They had to give up everything yeah. to get the one thing of great prize. Uh, the, the guy with the field had to sell all his other stuff to get the field, to get the treasure. And the merchant had to give up all his other pearls because this one was more important. Mm. So uh, if you're not baptised, get baptised. Let, let me come on to some of this because you've said this, and again, I, I know people think this and you know and, and have questions of this are you saying that baptism is essential for salvation the answer, just answer me that question first of all <laughs> i'm pinning you down jt yeah okay i will answer it in after this sentence i will answer that directly okay um uh if the approach is uh minimalistic Christianity, you can, you okay, can stick yeah. it. And, and I, I was going to move on to that. Yeah. It, no, I'm not saying Yeah. In, in, in other words, it's not essential for salvation, but, and this is where, we're, this is the point I really wanted to make there, which you've already made for me. But we're talking about the gospel, which is the gospel of the kingdom, which is much larger than me mm. being saved. Yes. But what we are saying is if we really want to know the fullness of what God has for us and come into that completeness of the gospel, then there are things which are essential for us to move into all of that. I, I think I would say, I think I would say, uh, no, I agree with you. Baptism isn't essential yeah. to, to be a Christian and whatever. But if someone chooses not to be baptized, they may not be a Christian. Right. I, I, I'm, yeah, I, you put your maze in there, I'll go along with you with the maze. But yes, I, I understand what you're saying, though. Um, uh, but it, it's the use of the word. If, yes. You see, in, in Acts it says that disciples were first called Christians. Christians yes. And we, we're too quick to rush in the word Christian because Christian means to most people someone who believes in Jesus. Yes. Someone who yes. said a prayer when they were four or something. No, no, no. Let's ask another question. Right? And people do it to me often. Do you think, they say, do you think that person's a Christian? I said, look, let me ask you another question. Is that person a disciple of Jesus? Yes, absolutely. And they say, well, no. You got your answer. Because the disciples were first called, called Christians. Christians. Not Christians, first called disciples. And, and disciples. At the same time, what I always feel is so revealing, and I think we did this when we looked at yeah. Acts, uh, uh, a few months, maybe a year or so ago, um, when we actually looked at it, 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 it was that the others looking on daren't associate with mm. these Christians. It, they, they held them in high respect, yeah, yeah. but they daren't associate. Why? Because they knew they weren't what they mm. were. Now, that today, that has got so totally blurred yeah. where people in the world don't really know the Lord can easily mix yeah. and be willing to mix with Christians uh, but because of that and yeah. therefore it is the disciples and it's becoming that disciple that's what we're talking about in the mm. gospel of mm. the kingdom isn't it we're not just call, talking about oh I am now a Christian because I've prayed this prayer or stuck yeah. my hand out or walked right. down it's the front it's being a disciple of Jesus it's being a disciple of Jesus now take us through therefore mm. we, we, we talked about repentance we talked about baptism okay now what is so essential and, and what is true repentance? I.e., I can come and say, oh, JT, I'm sorry, and either not mean mm. it or, well, I, I've got to say sorry because you're a Christian and I'm a Christian, I better yeah. do it. You know, when you repent before the Lord, what does that really mean? 
but we've got a number of examples in the New Testament of what, what it could mean in different situations. And for different people, it is different things. So, and there, you know, you can always quote individual awkward situations, but I'm talking about generally across the world, what would we expect repentance to look like? For Greek geeks, it's the word metanoia, which strictly speaking means change your mind. Now, we mustn't misunderstand that as being, I've changed my mind now. Yes, yeah. No, this is change the way that you think. Yeah. Change the way you think about your life and, and everything else. And uh, um, change your hearts and lives. That's how it's often translated in the New Century Version, which I like. It does that there. So what does that mean? Well, let him who sins sin no longer. Now, th does that mean we become perfect? No, no, there's always an issue. But for the rich young ruler, the issue wasn't whether he was sleeping with his girlfriend. Uh, um, it wasn't to do with any other aspect of his life. It was to do with the fact that he was an extremely wealthy man. And that came before Jesus. Jesus discerned this and said to him, give up all you have and follow me. And uh, he, he says he went away sad because it was too much for him to do. And you can imagine the disciples saying, Jesus, you've blown it, you've blown it. We could have had a rich guy following us. No, uh, re you know, repentance involves uh, the act of putting Jesus first. So how do things change then? Uh, I once said to a lad, uh, which I, in one of the six messages I would have said this, I once said to a lad, he came up to me, he non-Christian, non-Christian background. He had seen worship with all the young people that we had there. I uh, was excited and wow, this is amazing. He probably saw some of the pretty girls and yeah, uh, I want to yeah. be here. And he said, JT, I want to become a Christian. I said, okay. I said, this is what it'll mean. This, is, this was even before we sat down and had a chat, right? This is what it'll mean for you. Uh, I said, um, I, I explained all the good things. You know, it'll mean that you're going to live forever. It means you're going to be part of this big story. It means that you're going to have this huge family. Oh, uh. Then I said, but you will have to stop uh, sleeping with your girlfriend and being on the drugs. And he, his face dropped. Mm. And I said, look, I'll give, I'll give you a choice then, right? You know, do you want to go ahead now? We can have a sit down and have a chat about it. Or do you want to have some time to think about it? And he said, I'll have some time to think about it. That's really good, I said. That's really good. That was in 1986. That's amazing, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. And I, f I don't feel guilty about that at all. No. Because we've got to do it right, you see. What you're really saying there is sometimes we make it too easy. It's not that you are saying we should make it harder because you're, what you're clearly saying from Scripture is this is what Scripture says. Mm. So we're not making it harder, we're just making it clearer. Mm. But the so often, maybe because we want to get the numbers in the kingdom, well, no, no, we assume the numbers coming into the kingdom, let me rephrase yeah, that. Yeah. Maybe because we want to, quote, have a successful ministry and say 3,000 mm. people got saved here and there. We're making, it, we're making it easier, but we're actually not making it easier because we're, we're giving them a way that is not a way. Mm. Therefore, we're actually putting blockages in their way, aren't we? We're giving them false currency. Yeah. We're, give, we're giving them, a, a, if you like, um, a pass key, which isn't going to work. Uh, it, it hasn't got the, uh, the right the information code. on it, yeah, the right yeah. code on yeah. it. It's not going to work. And they, they think they're OK because they've got Jesus in their heart, whatever that's supposed to mean, yeah. you know. Um, but, but they're not. So, you know, for people listening to this or viewing this programme, uh, look, all you have to do is revisit the foundations, mm. repent. So please don't say my Christian life isn't working when uh, you're living with someone who isn't your husband, yeah. as an example. Yeah. Um, please don't blame God or the Christian life or the church. And please don't say that they're being condemnatory or whatever. They still love you. Mm. Um, but, f f but, but if you if you want to follow Jesus, follow Jesus. Um, so. If, if our lives have not changed, and that doesn't necessarily mean overnight and, and, and immediate, because mm -hmm. it, it, obviously there, can, there, there, there is a process that we're dealing with mm -hmm. here. But if our lives in a reasonable amount of time, and I have to say in the New Testament it was instant, <laughs> but if our lives do not change after we've made that commitment, yeah. you've talked about revisiting it. Mm -hmm. Now... That's not doubting 
the sincerity of the person. That's not doubting their salvation because only God knows. But what we're saying is, if if you were if you're building a building and it and 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 you've you know you're you're getting up halfway and mm. and the walls are cracking and and it's not holding the roof up as mm. it should and all this sort of thing the only way to do with it is to go back to the foundations mm. and lay them properly that's right build your house upon the rock and and yeah and so don't doubt your salvation don't mm. doubt god don't doubt that but mm. make sure the foundations are laid properly yeah and and just on a slight aside which is relevant to the the way that you framed that comment is that Please don't think if things are going wrong and are difficult in your life that that, that somehow was not to be the case when you became a Christian. Mm -hmm. You know, the scriptures do say through many troubles we will enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that it is. You it know, is. we will face problems, we will face trials. Some of them increased because we have become Christians, because we're following Jesus now. We will have a crisis of conscience over some issues if we're in business sometimes. We, we will have, we will lose some friends because we, we don't go out to get slashed on a Friday night anymore with them. This will happen. So please, you know, let, let's not communicate that it's going to be smooth and wonderful. Uh, we, are, we are entering the biggest story, as I said, in the cosmos, and it's going to cause ripples amongst those around us. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, let's do it right. So the, the gospel isn't do it yourself, okay? The gospel is allowing Christ to do it, but it is giving him the permission to, to really do it. It is realizing, as it says in Ephesians, you know, if, mm. if, if you've been a perpetual liar, stop lying. Mm. You know, if you've been totally idle, start working. That's and right. in fact, it, in other words, there are certain things we can do and, mm. and, and, and should do, and you, you, you've mentioned that. Um, but it, it, it's allowing Christ to do that, and it's taking our eyes off of ourselves yeah. and looking to Him, isn't it? I mean, uh, okay, that's a wonderful you know, trite phrase, mm. looking to Him, but it means considering Him, thinking about Him, letting Him be the centre mm. of our lives, and not me. It, it isn't having Jesus as part of your life. And I could say that in many situations, and people would think that's what the Gospel is, having Jesus as part of your life, right? Uh, because he becomes your lifestyle coach, he becomes your best friend, he becomes whatever. But when it comes to uh, thinking about how we should respond to this, we are becoming part of his life, his story. And that will have a knock-on effect to everything. Our life then must change eventually. And um, uh, that's, why, that's why the response to the gospel is repentance, turning around, going God's way, baptism, marking that as um, the, the turning event, if you like, and one is the outside and one is the inside of the same thing. It's uh, faith in Jesus, which is the key anyway, and um, receiving the Holy Spirit. Not in some academic sense, um, we believe in the Holy Spirit, no, 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 just like it was in the New Testament where mm -hmm. you, you practically receive the Holy Spirit, you then become uh, aware of his presence, he whispers to you, you're a child of God, you're a child of God. He equips you with, uh, with gifts and uh, his, him dwelling in us will produce fruit. Uh, it's, um, it's getting the foundations right so we can live properly for Jesus. Okay, you've mentioned it again there, baptism. What actually does baptism do? Um, you know, you, you, we, we've said, you, you've said, you, you don't see any Christian in the New Testament not being say uh, not being baptized. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't see uh, any reason why anybody shouldn't be baptized. And you've said you really question some people if they've actually mm -hmm. refused to be baptized. That makes baptism, according to you, and you would say according to Scripture, mm -hmm. very very important. Now, why is it so important? Well, um, I suppose there is a, a parallel uh, in the New Testament baptism with an Old Testament circumcision. To become part of the people of God, to be identified as God's people in the Old Testament, you would need to be circumcised. We won't go into the details of circumcision because this is a family show. Um, but in, in the New Testament, it, 
uh, us becoming Christian, if you like, part of God's people, is not to do with our natural birth, is to do with our spiritual birth. And so the New Testament sign is, is baptism. And because we've divorced in time one from the other, um, we, we tend to forget the meaning. Baptism is not, the primary meaning of baptism is not a public witness to what you've done. The Bible, if you, if you can find a verse that does that, I, I, you know, I might believe someone, but it doesn't say that. Baptism, it says, be baptized and wash away your sins, because that's what happened. People repented and believed and they got baptized. Um, baptism, so in that sense, baptism's like that. Baptism is uh, the, if you like, the physical, God knows we're physical beings, right? And when we do something, we, in some way enter into the truth of what it's portraying, which is death to the past, burial and resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And um, th that's why baptism is important. Also, there is this element of being baptized into one body. So baptism in water and baptism in the spirit are two sides of the same coin, if you like. That uh, baptism marks us as becoming part of the people of God. We've all died, we've all been buried, and we're all raised from the dead, and we're all following Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it is that important. Who are we testifying to then? Uh, is it to God? Is it to the devil? I mean, I mean because it's an outward act, and you know, it, it obviously has to be something of a testimony to somebody or other. Well, uh, uh, it's, a, it's Peter talks about being a pledge of a good conscience towards God. So, you know, we, we by, by being baptised, we are obeying Jesus and we, we are saying that, uh, um, Lord, we're yours. Mm -hmm. We're now dead. We're entirely, we, our life is, is yours to, to, to serve and whatever. Um, the fact that, uh, an incidental fact of baptism is that it causes those who have no faith to question. And to ask. Why are you doing it? Yeah. yeah. So l let's not confuse the practical uh, upshot. Like we do baptisms very publicly. We often do them in the sea. Um, we, we make a big fuss and we invite all friends and relatives. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have a meal afterwards. It's like, I love baptisms. I just love baptisms. And you get to talk about the gospel, explain what it is and what these people are doing and get them to say things. It's just wonderful, you know? And one of the things that is often associated um, with baptism in water in the New Testament, of course, is baptism in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, that's a phrase that in some areas is totally maligned, in some areas is, mm. you know, is, is probably taken far too seriously. But what is that part of the gospel yeah. And, and if so, um, uh, not just what is it, because the Holy Spirit is a person, yeah. but, but who is it, what is happening okay. at that point? We, we, I think there's a tendency to mix up the benefits of the gospel with the gospel. So the gospel is about Jesus. The gospel is about the fact that he's been raised from the dead. He's now Lord of all. The benefits of the gospel uh, for us as individuals would be that our sins are forgiven. Um, that uh, we can have, if we respond in the biblical way, that we can have the Holy Spirit in, within us, who, who uh, as I said earlier, whispers to us in Romans 8 that we're talking about now. He's also a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. So when we think of you know, the, the hope that we're born into, which is actually the resurrection of the dead, it's not going to heaven when we die, and there's another program there. Um, it is the resurrection of the dead, it's not life after death, the hope that we're born into, Paul says it in Acts 22 and 23, is the resurrection of the dead. So that is yet to come, the regeneration of everything. Romans 8 talks about um, waiting for the sons of God to be revealed, the whole creation is waiting. Why is the whole creation waiting? It's because God's plan is bigger than just us. But we are important to God, and so we are part of that process. So the Holy Spirit, um, Receiving the Holy Spirit is not uh, a theoretical thing. 
When I became a Christian, I, I knelt on the floor in a little white tent at the bottom of a field in Kumaivi Farm, Goa. Those who know Goa? And this guy went to a pile of Bible verses with me, and he told me, now you've received the Holy Spirit. And he shook my hand, and I thought, oh, good, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> uh, some 10 years later, when I began to read the book of Acts uh, and discover what receiving the Holy Spirit was all about, things happened. People prophesied, people spoke in tongues, people became amazingly bold. Things happen when you receive the Holy Spirit. So uh, whether you call it receiving the Spirit, baptism in the Spirit, look, I don't care. But I, I want all Christians to come into a reality of the work of the Holy Spirit, the reality of the Holy Spirit um, uh, in, in their lives and to see and to experience what that involves. It's a piece of the future planted inside us. Uh, it's the deposit of all that is to come. And um, I know people are going to find this controversial, but that, that's what it is. It's not theoretical. It's not, the people, what do they say? They say, uh, uh, um, receive Jesus and believe in the Holy Spirit. Well, it doesn't work like that because the Bible actually says, believe in Jesus and receive the Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, for those who embrace the terminology of baptism in the Spirit, get out there, talk to someone. And the two ways people got received the Spirit were either spontaneously, as they responded to the Gospel, Acts chapter 10, or people laid hands on them. Would you, would you say... Acts chapter 8. <laughs> Good. Would you say, as you said of baptism, would you say the same of receiving the Holy Spirit, that if somebody can actually see what receiving the Holy Spirit means, can see that the Holy Spirit is God, part of the Godhead, and not just a thing, a power, and actually says in one degree or another, I do not want it, which is worse, but even if they, you know, however they put it, would you, would you say again that you would really question where they're coming from? Because this is part and parcel of the fullness and the completeness that God has given. Yes, I would question, but I'd also be just very sad. And I, I do know some people who uh, follow Jesus who have reacted to excess and stupidity in Christian circles and won't have anything to do. Like when I, when I, 10 years after I had repented and believed and been baptized, um, came into the, the experience of the Holy Spirit, I was, I was so anti, Doug, mm -hmm. and I, I know we did a program before, but I was yes. so anti yes. that, that if anybody had dared put their hands on my head, I would have lamped them one. And it was the case, you know? But God caught me by surprise. I was driving down a motorway in the car, and Holy Spirit, I was praising God and yearning for an experience of the Holy Spirit, like I read in the book of Acts. And I finished a song and out came a language I'd never learned before. And that, to me, was the sign um, uh, that the Holy Spirit had, uh, uh, had been baptised in the Spirit. Mm. Mm. We, we've been talking in this programme, maybe for some, some controversial things, but I think we would both agree that those things are found clearly in Scripture. Mm. And yet maybe they're not talked about or communicated the way that we've done it in this, yeah. uh, this last hour or so. What, what can we do for those that are listening and saying, yes, guys, I agree with you, absolutely so. What can we do to communicate this with the, the, the rest that are sitting there? Well, I, I, I was saved. I, I, I said I wanted and I'll go mm. to this church of 22 million people or, you know, slight exaggeration. Um, uh, you know, everything's fine, everything's lovely. What can we say to such people? Well, if people feel, feel they've got it all, well, that's what they want to have. They've got it all, haven't they? But um, I would firstly say to leaders and to evangelists in particular that we, we need to put aside, um, if you like, the marketing of the gospel and to embrace the biblical understanding of the gospel. So when we teach our people, when we communicate the gospel, an evangelist shouldn't be measured uh, by the number of hands that go up or the ones who come down the front, who may have never not become a Christian at all. They may just be wanting to ask questions, right? 
Um, evangelism should not be measured by that. And evangelism should be measured by effective communication of the gospel and developing others to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And if n no one responds, there may be something wrong, but um, uh, that's not the key thing. So one evangelist who has a thousand people putting their hands up and coming to the front uh, might not be actually preaching the gospel and, and demanding a response. In fact, in, in the young people's work that I'm involved with, we don't do appeals. And yet we've seen scores and scores and scores of young people come to faith over the years. And we seek to disciple them, you know. In other words, can I just come in there? You, what you're saying is you, you, you truly preach the gospel. Well, we, we try to. Yeah, OK. And, and you close the meeting without an appeal, but people will come up and, mm. and talk with you anyway because the word has so lodged in their hearts, they mm. feel they've got to respond somehow. Yeah, and it is lovely when young people come up to you and they just, they fire back at you the words that you've communicated. And uh, I'm thinking of three girls that came up to me a little while ago, uh, 17, 16 year olds, and they said, uh, JT, JT, um, we want to repent. And I think that is just wonderful. Right. We want to repent. Yeah. Um, and uh, when, when we get back now, there's a bunch of baptisms coming up, which I'm, looking forward to mainly young people but some older ones as well mm -hmm. you know but uh, it's it's but understanding the gospel uh, you know if we if we if we communicated how big and how wonderful and how awesome it is and how much to do with Jesus it is um, we would have people who would firstly they'd focus their faith on Jesus and they wouldn't be focusing their faith on uh, did dinosaurs fit into the ark their faith would rest on the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. One of your favourite subjects. I know it is, because I was there, Dick. Yes, I, know. I was there. You measured them and you knew how. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and um, we'd have people who, who's at the focus of their faith is on Jesus and the resurrection from the dead. They would understand that the mess that this world is in won't be forever. And Jesus coming back from the dead, us entering into that by being repenting and being baptized is if you like we are we are part of the new thing that God is doing the if you like the the this new world that's emerging inside the wreck of the old one uh, because we are his people mm -hmm. and one day as we be as we flow into this great Im immense story drawing other people with us come follow Jesus come with us come with us come on that we'll, we'll see not only personal life, but life for the creation as well. Something just came to me as we were talking here. Are, are you, do you feel or are you saying that the gospel, so often what you hear is you're wrong, you're a sinner, mm. you've done this, you've done that, you've done the other, you're terrible, you're awful. And even in that sense, the mm. emphasis is on me. It absolutely does, yeah. But what you're saying is the gospel actually is communicating who Jesus is and let me see myself with in there, the light the of it. Do, 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 do you think I've suddenly had revelation oh, we're here, there, We're there, that's right. <laughs> but is that true? I mean, Yeah, really? it is. Yes. Because, um, like, very often the gospel presentation starts as you sinned, yes. Jesus died, you know, pray this prayer, whatever. Um, but that's not the gospel. The, if, if it starts anywhere, it says that God made everything and he made it good, mm -hmm. all right? It got broke, we broke it. Um, Jesus came, he'll fix it. He's strong enough, tough enough, and he's done enough to fix it all, and we can be part of that story. Mm -hmm. That is, if you like, a shorthand four points of the gospel, mm -hmm. if you could possibly do it that yeah. way. But it is about Jesus, not about us. And of course, it. It's, I know people are saying, yeah, but you're going soft on sin. No, we're not. We're actually upping the ante yes. because we're saying that people need to repent and believe. Yes. But we're not making sin the first thing that we talk about, you know. You read Acts 17, you, you'll see what is, when Paul in Athens, you'll see what's essential in the gospel. He even misses the death of Jesus. He only talks about the resurrection. Um, you read Acts chapter 10, you get Peter explaining it to Cornelius and whatever. These, these are rich things, uh, not just some narrow stuff. And it's not, you know, um, avoid hell. You're sinners, avoid hell. That is not 
good news. Mm -hmm. It's not the gospel. Um, it detracts from Jesus and it actually, as you say, makes them the centre again. Let's move on to something else before our time runs out, JT. And that is this. Many people doubt and question their, their salvation. Am I saved? Uh, Etc. Again, is this the same route because they're so concentrating on themselves and on me and, and, and that? Can I know I'm saved? Can I, you know, without being bullshit about it, oh, I'm saved. I'm, no, can I know what God has done and he's done it in me? Is, is, is that possible? And should it be possible? Um, these things are written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. That's 1 John 5, 13. These things are written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have present possession, eternal life. Um, if I ever doubt my salvation, which I haven't for a long time, I've got to say, uh, I remember my baptism. I died. So it's not my life, it's Jesus. Um, if people are disobeying God, if they're doing really bad stuff, well, you are reaping the consequences if you're doubting your salvation. Because if you haven't confessed your sins and you haven't gone to the one who is faithful and right and will forgive your sins, of course you'll doubt your salvation. If you're denying the work of the Holy Spirit, if you're refusing to be baptised, and if you're simply not uh, seeking to follow Jesus, of course you'll doubt your salvation. Of course you will. But you don't have to. You really don't have to. So you're saying to people watching this programme now, if, if, if they're sitting there questioning, doubting, you're saying you don't have to. What do they do? Well, they need to check the foundations. But uh, the key thing is to go to Jesus and to trust in him, to trust in Jesus. Someone was t talking to me last night and they'd had doubts about uh, the fate of the lost and what God was like. And I said, um, what does Jesus say? What does Jesus say? And this man was tormented, you know? And I said, trust Jesus. But what about, what about, what about all these things? What about all those babies? What about the people who've never heard? What about, what about, what about? Do you trust Jesus? Mm -hmm. Not to tick your boxes, but do you trust Jesus? And you read who he, he is, you read what he's done, and the only response that will carry us through to the day that we die, or the day Jesus returns, is, I trust you, Lord. Mm. I trust you. It is because we can't play God. And, and maybe we actually won't know some of these answers, this, mm. this side of, uh, of, of being with him and seeing him without you know, anything in between. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so it, 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 it comes to a matter of trust. I, it's, it's not about me, it's about him. I trust him. Mm. He knows what he's doing. He knows those areas and mm. I, I guess for many of us we we're, we're so wanting me to have the answers and as you said there I want to tick my boxes I, I want this mm. rather than saying Lord okay I trust you you know I whatever happens I yeah. trust you yeah that's right and when people come up with fancy arguments like some of the new atheists will have a go at parts of the Old Testament and Christians who understand the scriptures will be able to answer those really quite effectively but we can shortcut the process and say, um, Mr. Dawkins, you're obviously you're not aware that things have become clearer now. And whatever the fog about those things, because you're talking thousands of years ago, Mr. Dawkins, uh, Professor Dawkins, Mr. Da whatever, um, <laughs> it's different now because Jesus has come and yeah. uh, he is the image of the one who is invisible. Uh, if you've seen him, you've seen God. So I would urge you, Mr. Dawkins, read uh, the Gospels. For yourself and and what we've encouraged people out of this program is not to doubt is not to question is not to say oh i'm not saved or this or another but is to check those foundations yeah. and to say you can know you can move into the right. bigger picture right. where the lord is center and not you and that's what we want you to do that's right and i'll add one thing which i think 
might be important for some people is the Christian life is never meant to be lived, me and Jesus, on the Jericho Road walking to heaven. It's meant to be us and Jesus. We're meant to be community, just like what God is. Yeah. Father, Son and Spirit, be JT, part of the community. Thanks so much indeed. Thank you for being with us. Can I say there are notes available for this program. And so if you want to get hold of them, ring the office or email info at revelationtv.com and we'll make sure you get them. Please walk on with the Lord. Ensure that you know him and are following him, not yourself. Great to have had you with us. See you again next time.